I've got two questions in this video that I want you to answer in the comments. First, pens or pencils? There's not a wrong answer, but I think there definitely is a right answer. Hey internet, Harris here. Uh, so just a couple months left at college at, uh, at BC, uh, which is kind of weird to think about. Anyway, I've been using the iPad, nope, I've been using the iPad Air 5 for a couple weeks now and just with every new iPad update, I love it. And I, I truly do love the iPad for the student experience. However, Apple makes this decision uh, harder and harder to, to make and harder for me to make a, a video talking about this device for students because obviously this iPad is awesome and I can say go get it, but then you have iPads that are a couple hundred dollars more expensive and then somewhere you've got the iPad that is several hundred dollars cheaper. I'll try to make this video as practical as possible. If you're just looking for the note-taking experience and you just want to use a stylus with your iPad, maybe read some books on it, go for the cheap iPad and go for like a cheap $30 stylus. I've made a video on these cheap styli before, go for that. But I know if you want something sleeker, nicer, and just that full screen effect, because I mean, that's it's pretty sick. Like, I, you know, it's awesome. Probably go for the iPad Air 5. However, if you do want more storage, more than 64 gigabytes, and you are using it specifically for um, artistic purposes with the Apple Pencil, and you can benefit from the faster refresh screen, and if you don't know what that means, that probably means that you don't really need it. Again, uh, that's why you might maybe want to go for the iPad Pro. But I think for most students, this is an awesome combo, a bit expensive, but for me, I can pretty much completely replace my laptop experience as a, a humanities major, right? Philosophy and communication. I don't have any computer science work to do. I don't have any um, online labs. I do have some Spanish homework, which gets a little tricky using my Spanish lab and an iPad. But for the most part, I can write my papers, read my books, take my notes, watch some YouTube, FaceTime some friends, and watch baseball games on this iPad and enjoy it. And I will tell you, I never get tired of the feeling of using the iPad with the keyboard and trackpad, which of course you don't have to do with your iPad. But for me, the feeling of using that as basically a full desktop experience, and then just taking the iPad off with a magnet, uh, using it as a really good tablet, and then also just using the Apple Pencil, to take notes, annotate documents, stuff like that. It is a lovely, or as I just heard in Dublin, a lovely, uh, it's a lovely, divine experience. Let's talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so yeah, pretty much everything I do now, I do on the iPad. Um, and that's why I do like having the non-budget iPad because I use it for so much, as well as this thing is so fast, like as fast as this uh, with the M1 processor. So it really makes it easy to do anything I want from editing videos, editing photos, and then just anything else I wanna do on an iPad, I can do. I type my papers on here, usually using the notes app, and then maybe I'll copy and paste it into something else if I need to export it to submit it. I can use Canvas for my assignments. I do pretty much everything on the iPad. Um, and there are a couple downsides which we'll talk about, but in general, I think that, well, I personally can use this for just about everything that I need to. At the end of the day, this probably can't 100% replace a laptop. So for most students, you probably won't be able to just use the iPad. You might be able to, but there's probably going to be a few things here and there that are just going to be really difficult. Now, I guess one alternative is that you can use this iPad and then if you need a computer for something else, you can go use your library's computer or something like that. And if you go for the cheapest MacBook Air and the cheapest iPad Air, that's really not a terrible price point for a really well-rounded experience to have a good laptop when you need a laptop um, and an awesome tablet for just about everything else. Or hey, like go for, I mean, Apple doesn't want to hear this, but maybe go for a, just a much cheaper laptop for all the things that you need to do on that. I'm, I'm still, I would lean towards the Mac, but that's an option. All right. So now I want to give you a bit more of what my typical day-by-day -day experience is like with the iPad Air 5. So this pretty much always includes the Apple Pencil and 
the Magic Keyboard. But again, you can go with either of these options or neither, or cheaper versions of both of these options if you choose. But most of the time I'm um, using my iPad, it is through Canvas, which is our um, kind of school or class management system we use here at Boston College. So I'll go into Canvas and you know I'll choose my class. So this is Sacraments and Art. It depends how my professor organizes the class, but for this one, it's under assignments. Uh, each week we have readings and then a reflection to post. So I'll go under here and then to the right you can see there are two articles linked. So I'll click on both of those articles uh, one at a time and it'll load that PDF. And then I will share it to Notability. I will create a new note. Um, you can do this however you want it. I'll go in and adjust the title just so it's a little bit cleaner. Um, I'll choose the subject, so sacraments and art. And then I'll go into pages and I'll take out any pages that I don't need. So for this, this included like a, um, a superfluous title page type thing. So I get rid of that. And then I can just leave the bibliography at the end. Not a big deal. And then I click import and that has been sent to Notability. So then I hop over to Notability and then I'll go into that document and then I will read it and I will annotate it. Um, and I actually already did this. So we'll go into the one that I already annotated so you can see this is the one I already annotated and you can see I have highlights and some scribbles and, and things here and there. So then the next thing I would do is either pull up notes or pages or Google Docs or something to the side of that application. So for this example, we'll do notes. So I'd pull up notes and pull up a new document and then I would title this something like 11 April 2022 Reflection. And then I would start typing my 500 word weekly reflection for this week's assignment. All right, and I'd have this pulled up to the side and I would write, write, write. Okay, simple enough. Um, and then from here, I can copy and paste this into Canvas or I can copy and paste this into Google Docs or something and export that as PDF. Let's say I have my final uh, reflection finished and then I click export and we'll say uh, PDF is fine. And then I'll export that into Canvas and I'll choose the course and then I'll choose um, the assignment and then I can submit it right from there. So that's a really efficient way of both doing the reading, the annotation and the paper writing. Then when I'm in class, it's going to look a little bit different. I will pull up whatever reading we had for that week. Then I'll also pull over my main um, note application or note document. Uh, so you can see I have on the left, I have the notes I'm taking for that class um, during that class period. And then on the right, I have that reading. It's a little bit snug on the 11 inch iPad, but it's doable. And on the 12.9 inch iPad, it would be even better. And then of course I can um, record audio for that class so I can have that lecture recorded if I need to go back and review my notes later on. So that's a really, really good system. And then if I'm in class and I need to look something up, again, I try to say off the internet in class, but if I'm looking something up, I can drag over something like Safari off to the side. Then I can quickly look something up. <laughs> Let's just pull up a, a picture of Abe Lincoln. And then if I just wanted to drag this image over for whatever reason, boom, I can do that. That's really nice. Now what's interesting is that in this video, I didn't talk about any of Apple's new features, the center stage camera, the super wide angle camera that can kind of follow you around as you move. It's cool, I don't really use it. 5G, amazing. Being able to like do work on my iPad when I'm on the train or sitting by the reservoir or whatever is great, but it's expensive. I certainly would never pay for that myself as a student. Um, I can always hotspot to my phone. Not as convenient, but so much cheaper, so again, uh, it's cool that there's 5G, but whatever. Uh, but then the M1 processor that makes this iPad much faster is awesome and I think will serve a lot of people really well. So uh, it's a great device. And the second question that I mentioned earlier, I wanna know if you use an iPad for school, do you use just the iPad? Do you use the iPad and the Apple Pencil or a keyboard and trackpad as well? I certainly use all three, but let me know how you iPad for school. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.